Welcome back to Mnix. A Hong Kong court has ordered the liquidation of China Evergrande Group, a move that is likely to send ripples through China's real estate sector. Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer, has been in financial trouble for the last two years. The court appointed Alvarez and Marsal as liquidator to manage the company, with powers to seize Evergrande assets in Hong Kong. However, the implications of the liquidation order for the company's vast business in mainland China are unclear. Evergrande CEO Xiao En told state media that the liquidation order doesn't affect the Hengda Real Estate Group, which has most of its assets in mainland China. Most of Evergrande's assets, about 90% according to Judge Linda Chan's ruling, are in mainland China. There are jurisdictional issues due to China's two systems slogan, and experts are unsure whether the liquidation order will be recognized in mainland China. If mainland China doesn't recognize the liquidation order, International creditors are likely to suffer heavy losses on their exposure to Evergrande. The liquidation order is another blow to investor sentiment, and it is expected to further decay investor confidence in China's ailing real estate sector. The Evergrande liquidation stemmed from a confluence of factors precipitating the company's financial crisis. Firstly, as the world's most indebted property developer, Evergrande found itself burdened by a staggering debt exceeding $300 billion, surpassing its total assets valued at approximately $240 billion. Evergrande was unable to find more credit or achieve enough revenue to service its debts. Despite the company's attempts at debt restructuring, these efforts proved unsuccessful. The Chinese government's lockdowns following COVID and stringent measures to curb excess borrowing in the real estate sector further exacerbated the situation, contributing to a wave of collapses among Chinese developers since 2020. There are two things to watch for. First is to watch out for what happens to the Chinese creditors of Evergrande. The worst case is if an overexposed creditor is in danger of staying afloat even after receiving the proceeds of the sale of Evergrande's assets. This has the potential to create a domino effect where the creditor would need to come up with more chas by either getting more loans or selling off assets. If a credit line can't be extended or if asset sales are far below their book value, the contagion could spread further thus leading to an economic-wide issue potentially extending to other countries. Low aggregate demand on the China side would especially affect commodity prices and the economies of commodity-producing nations China trades with, such as Australia, Iran, and African countries. The Reserve Bank of China has cautioned about a potential reduction in Chinese imports of Australian goods and services due to issues arising from the pronounced deterioration in China's property sector. The foreign creditor case is a little unique, because there are some jurisdictional concerns with the Chinese portion of Evergrande's assets. 90% of Evergrande's assets are in mainland China. Foreign creditors' ability to seek the sale of Evergrande's assets in mainland China hinges on whether China acknowledges and enforces the decision of the Hong Kong court as mentioned earlier. Should this recognition not materialize, offshore creditors may find themselves unable to stake a claim on assets within the mainland potentially prolonging the liquidation resolution process for years and increasing the likelihood of spillover effects. That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe for the next brief.